Hey friends, my name is Dave Schmitzke. I'm what's called a public information officer and I'm at Clark County Fire District 6. Normally in the fall, we like to go to all the schools in our district, talk about safety, fire prevention. Obviously this year we can't do that. So instead, I thought I'd put together a virtual presentation that I think you'll like and you may just learn something. So our first story is actually a tour of a fire station. This station, Station 61. We're gonna show you what the station looks like and then we're gonna have a little fun with outtakes at the end. I'm gonna start at the nerve center of every fire station. That's right, the kitchen. Hello, my name is Firefighter Smith and we are in the kitchen. Don't know if you noticed, but we have three refrigerators. We have three cupboards because we have three ships. Got our oven, coffee pot, and our stove. We're here for 24 hours, so we have to make all of our meals. And this is the kitchen table. This is where we have our meals. And this is where we get together to talk about the shift and what we have going for the day. Hi, I'm Captain Bottomley. This is our dormitory, which is our bedroom. And so each one of us has a quarters that we have a bed in and we have lockers in which we keep all of our personal belongings in. Hi, I'm Fire Chief Kristen Maurer. I know you guys think that fire stations just hold firefighters, but there's also chief officers and administrators that help the department run. I'm going to take you and introduce you to the other chiefs. This is our administrative chief, Dave Schmidt. Hi, how are you doing? He's responsible for hiring firefighters, writing policies, and just helping us with any administrative needs. This is assistant chief, Dave Russell. He's responsible for operations at the fire district. So that means he gets the engines on the road with the right amount of people and gets us out the door fast. Let's go see if we can find the logistics chief. Oh, there he is. Hi, Chief Maurer. Hi, Chief Newberry. <laughs> chief Newberry is responsible for buying everything that you see around here. He helps build our facilities, purchases our fire engines, and buys all the equipment that the firefighters wear to keep them safe. Hi, I'm Firefighter Max, and I'm in our gym where we work out. We're required to work out here an hour every day because this job can be very physically demanding. And if we ever get a call, we walk over to this door here and use our fire pole. This is where the captain sits. This is an MDC, which is a computer that allows me to get all of the information when you call 911. So when you call 911, please give them all the information you can because the more information you give them, the more information I can give my crew on the way to a call. It's extremely important that you give them all the detailed information you can because I can relay this to my paramedic. When we get to a scene, a medical scene, the paramedic, a firefighter myself, will walk into the scene and the paramedic will be one of the first individuals into the scene. Hi, I'm Pi Firefighter Paramedic Ashley, and this is our EMS cabinet. We hold a lot of medical supplies in this cabinet to bring in onto emergency scenes. That there is a heart monitor. So if you're having a heart attack, we can take a look. And now I'll pass you off to Firefighter Jeff Peterson. Hi, so just like your parents' garage, we have all kinds of tools that we carry because you never know what we're gonna go on. Like this tool here. This is our jaws of life that we might have to use in case you're in a car accident. And over here, this is Max, who you met earlier. This is the gear that we wear when we go on a fire. When I'm wearing this, I can be in temperatures of over 500 degrees. Now I'll take you over to Firefighter Smith. Thanks, Max. 
This is our pump panel. And this is what we hook up our hose to, to put out the fire. While we were finishing the last shot in this video, two calls came in. So now the mood goes from somewhat lighthearted to all business. Now by law, we have 90 seconds or less to get out the door. This crew will make it in right around seven. Hi, I'm Captain Bottomley. I'm in the dormitory, which is the sleeping area in which we sleep in. And this is the bed where we sleep. And this is this is where we sleep. <laughs> this is my blanket, and I it's get fine. out here and I sleep. It's fine. It's fine. Hi. It's fine. This is Captain no, I don't Bottomley. Want, I, I don't even want to. I'm not available to take your call. Just leave with me. Oh. <laughs> Dude, don't cut that out. <laughs> Hang out and talk about whatever we like. That's <laughs> going through my mind. <laughs> I, I froze up, sorry. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, did you mention the sleeping quarters again? <laughs> Here we go. Hi, I'm Fire Chief Kristen Maurer. Well, which we, we want to kind of go continue. <laughs> you are all shoot. Hi, I'm Kristen Maurer, and I'm like, and? and? <laughs> this is Assistant Chief David Schmidt. <laughs> Hey, I need to tell you this. You have a new name. I do, yeah. yeah. Hey, got a question for you. At night, do you sleep with your bedroom door open or closed? Yeah, I know. Weird question. But depending on your answer, this next video may just change your mind. Oh my God, that is insane. In the event of a fire, who here thinks that you're safer sleeping with the doors open? I keep them open because I was a mom for so long. My kid's room is two doors down from mine. Always open. I'm not all that confident they would stop anything anyway. Harold, hey. Ben. Ben, nice to meet you. Harold, have a seat. Okay. Hi. Nice to meet you guys. Hello. Hello. I'm right here. Chris, how are you? Great. Think about fire safety. What keeps you up at night? Yeah, I'm not too concerned. I probably don't think about a fire threat as much as I should, because I do forget to turn things off often. Have you ever been through one? A fire? No. We told you that you'd be coming here today for discussion, but what we didn't tell you is that there is also a demonstration that we want to show you. Sound good? introduce you to Steve, the director of the UL Firefighter Safety Research Institute. I'll let Steve take it away. Welcome. My job is to lead a team of people that study how fire grows and spreads so we can keep you safe. 
Here at the Delaware County Emergency Services Training Center, we essentially turn this place into a laboratory. Uh, we've got several structures around here that we build to simulate where you live. And one of those structures is right here behind me. What I want you to do is I want to take you inside here and I want you to see how this looks like your home. And then once we get you outside, we're gonna go ahead and recreate what would happen if there was a fire in this structure right here. Look pretty normal? Yeah. yeah, got some furnishings. You'll notice the difference down here as we walk down. This bedroom door will be closed and the one at the end of the hall will be open. And what I want you to do is pay attention to the comparison of the two of those and think about you and your family trying to survive this fire. All right, we just hit the button, we have ignition. Oh boy, there she goes. Oh man, that is scary. It's scary, right? Yeah, it's really Look, we have wow, smoke coming out over here already. Smoke's coming out. <gasps> what a lot of people don't realize is that the furnishings that are in our homes today are made of synthetic materials. So they burn so much faster than your old natural cotton-filled furnishings used to be. The statistics that we've seen through our research is in about 40 years ago, you had about 17 minutes to get out of your house after the smoke alarm sounded. Now you have less than three minutes. See, this is what we're, this is the things that we were. Oh my God. Whoa. Can you feel that? How can you survive that? Seriously, that is insane. All right, go ahead, knock it down. All right, as you remember, closed door on the left, open door on the right. And you can see the dramatic wow. difference between the two with the simple closed door. Impressive. We want people to be as prepared as possible and understand the importance and how little time you have and what that simple barrier can provide to you and your family should you have a fire. I want you guys to throw some hard hats on and some safety glasses and at least poke your heads in the windows or you can even walk in the hallway if you want. Give me a word or phrase to describe what you just saw. Anxiety. Frightening. Terrifying. I really didn't expect anything like this. I'll ask you one last time, in the event of a fire, are you safer sleeping with the doors open or the doors closed? Without a doubt, the door closed. Definitely with the doors closed, and from now on, the doors will be shut at night. <laughs> Definitely closed. Closed. Definitely closed. And I'm surprised by it. It's always great to be able to get the message out when we can take our research and get it out into the community to change behavior with the message of close before you doze. It, it feels great and hopefully we can save lives. If there was one bit of advice that you could give friends or family today, what would it be? Close before you doze. 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 The key fire safety messages we want people to have are, one, have working smoke alarms in every level of your home, inside and outside every sleeping room. We want everybody to have an escape plan. Should you have a fire, you should know how to get out quickly. And if you can't get out quickly, having a closed door between you and where that fire is is critical to your survival. You know, for a lot of you, high school's not that far off. Believe it or not, a lot of our firefighters and paramedics got their start in high school. You can too, no joke. If you live in Clark County, you can enroll in the Fire Cadet Program. Here's how it works. The tricks of the trade, like how to extinguish a car fire. Just one of the things that a firefighter needs to know to face the reality of a very demanding job. Because we know that the car is going to the wrecking yard at the end of the day, but we're all going home together. So the important thing is that we work safe, we work as a team. See, yeah, that was a very explosive. Same deal with extrication. See, the pedal is holding this person's foot in place. There's a right and a wrong way to cut a patient out of a car. Instructors here are making sure the fire cadets learn the right way. Just think about what's going to move when things release or give way. And, and how can I be most out of the way 
and still operate the tool. The Fire Cadet program consists of high school juniors and seniors who have an interest in emergency services. Not necessarily firefighters or paramedics, but any and every aspect of emergency service. In Clark County, the Fire Cadet program is overseen by the Cascadia Tech Academy. And to have the professionalism skills that are honed in fire science or any of our other programs is such a huge leg up. We hear it over and over again from our kids. So whatever pathway they choose, they are going to be way ahead of the game. This is a very special three-day trip for the cadets. They drill on a regular basis during the school year, but for these three days, they are at the Marine and Environmental Research and Training Center, they call it MERTS, just outside of Astoria, Oregon. It's a dream come true. Everything I've ever thought it would be. It's awesome. You guys having fun? Oh, yes, sir. Good. These first and second year students participate in programs at various districts in Clark and Cowlitz counties. It gives them the ability to network with other students and uh, it really puts them in the middle of it. You know, day and night, rain or shine, live fire or not, they get to do stuff that's uh, something that they wouldn't normally do, especially in a high school program. For months, cadets have read and studied and tested about fire, but here they get to see it and fight it firsthand. Get up, Bo, Bo, Bo. And if you're really serious about becoming a firefighter or a paramedic, better get used to sleep deprivation. Oh, nice space. That looks fantastic. Let's move with a purpose. Get your gear on. Go outside. Instructors wake the cadets up two or three times a night. All those happy smiling. Where are you going? Uh-oh. Well, let's get him. Get him. Last night, they got us up twice. Mm -hmm. Twice. Uh, Our one. Bunkers. Yeah, they just, you know, decided, okay, these guys are going to go load us on the bus, send the rest of us back to bed. Wake you up again, surprise, they're back, come on, get on the bus, go, do work, get back, take a shower if you need to or want to, and get back in bed and wait for breakfast. Yeah, but, like, the general picture of it is, like, simulating what a firefighter is going to be like. You're going to have to get up in the middle of the, the, middle of the night, like 2 a.m., and go fight a fire, and it's going to be hard and you're not gonna feel good. And that's what it's preparing us for. They ran into lockers, they fell over their beds, and they did somersaults in the hallway. Fisher and I had to actually pull one out of bed because he didn't wake up. And if you have a thin skin, Mertz is not a fun place to be. Do you guys know the words to I'm a little teacup? Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. Here, a battalion forgot an important accountability system oh, battalion, called a passport tag. You're gonna get your passport tags back. You're gonna entertain all of us with, I'm a little teacup. I think we're all thankful this group is training for the fire service and not the choir. I'm a little teacup, short and stuck. Here is my hand, no, here is my stuff. At Clark County Fire District 6 alone, 12 of the 19 departing seniors already have lined up internships in emergency service agencies. That's a fantastic number. But the enrollment for the following year is dropping. To me, for, for fire science, it's really, I think, about marketing and trying to help share the opportunity because the not just the other programs, but fire science in particular, the opportunities are just rich with uh, with those uh, pathways for kids. Um, and it was great to be out there at the MERTS training to see the professionalism and see the enthusiasm. If I go to the left to fight fire, what does she do at the hose? Being a firefighter and or paramedic is highly technical, no doubt. But there's more to it than that. It's an attitude that these young people must learn. A lot of people, they think if it's hard, they're not gonna do it and they won't finish, but firefighters, they have to. Team building, crisis solving, fighting through adversity, all things these students learn at Mertz. It's three days that could affect the rest of their lives. And if you ever have to depend on emergency services, the training these people receive here may affect your life as well. If you have any questions about the Fire Cadet Program, it's really easy. Just follow this link on your screen. Well, that's all I got. But before I go, I have one more thing to tell you. The first Saturday of every June, we have an open house here at Station 61. It's really cool. We got free pop, hot dogs, cotton candy, you name it. We got demonstrations of car fires. The canine group is here. It's really entertaining. We'd love for you to come. I'm gonna get the information to your teacher right before the school year is over, so you'll know exactly where and when the open house is taking place. 
I want to thank you for watching. Don't worry, we're going to get through this together. And we just hope you have a safe and a fun school year.